Welcome to the online demonstration for the Easy on PC spirometer. The Easy on PC consists of two parts, the spirometer itself and also the software that's loaded onto the computer. The Easy on PC plugs into the computer via USB port, so it'll plug directly into the PC. The software itself is fully integratable with System 1, EMIS, Web and Vision. It will fully integrate, meaning that it will allow the recodes to be automatically populated into the correct template and also a PDF of the report attached onto the consultation. So I just plug this into the USB port on the side of the PC and everything's controlled now from the computer. So on the software itself we've got four options. We've got patients, test, history and utilities. So if we go into patients we can see a list of all the patients that are stored in the database. Now if there was hundreds in here, you can search for the last name, first name or ID number for the patient you want to find or you can add in a new patient down the bottom here so you would just complete these details and it would put the patient into the database. You can also add on smoking history if you wanted to and it would calculate the pack years for the patient. If you can see the patient already in here, which I can, you can just highlight the patient and then at the bottom you've got the option to test for a new spirometry test. You can also look at history, delete, edit the patient if you wanted to. So if I click on test, it's going to ask us which type of test we want to do. Now the two that we normally use are the SVC for slow vital capacity or the relaxed VC and the forced vital capacity, expiratory only. The other ones on here are full flow volume loop, provocation and MVV. We're not going to use those so I'm going to click on the SVC. Now you can do an inspiratory VC on here so it's looking on the screen and asking us to enter an ambient temperature. We don't need to worry about that because we're not doing inspiratory so we're not worried about the room temperature. So we can just click on confirm at that point. So the spirometer itself has three parts to the mouthpiece. So this one is called a Spirette M and this piece goes into the device itself. Now the device is ultrasonic so it has zero moving parts in here and it bounces sound backwards and forwards across a set distance about 200 times a second and because this distance is set the calibration of this cannot alter. Now within guidelines in the UK it recommends that you verify this before each clinic so you can do that with a 3 litre syringe and the results will be stored into the software. The Spirette M would go into here. Now on each side of the Spirette M is a window. Now in that window is a filter. So where the sound passes through there's a filter which means anything that's inside here, i.e. the patient's breath, will not come into contact in here. So for cleaning you can just wipe the outside of this down with a, a sterilizing wipe and change the spread M on a weekly basis. To pop this in, you'll see there's a triangle on here and a triangle on the spread M. Push that in. Then onto the front goes a mouthpiece adapter. And then your standard spirometry cardboard mouthpiece will just go onto the front of that. So between each patient, you obviously change the mouthpiece because they're single patient use. And the spread M is changed on a weekly basis. Now it's asking me on the screen here to block the spirit and prompt it to blast. So the spirit is this piece, we need to block it to zero the flow. So I just put my hand over the back, click on OK, and it says on here, setting the baseline, avoid any flow, start the test. So I'll pop the mouthpiece in and I'll just do a relaxed spirometry. Okay, so you can see the graph on the screen is nice and smooth. There's no blips, second breaths in, etc. We haven't got a variation yet between the tests because we've only done one. And down here we get the results. So the VC comes up with the predicted, the lower level of normal, and the current best one. It also shows me the percentage of predicted for the best one. And obviously the first trial here is my only trial. So that's my best one so far. So I need to do the best of three, ideally. So I'm going to click on Add Trial. And do the same again. So 
So now on the screen we've got two graphs overlaid. They're pretty similar and the volume is, is more or less the same. Variation comes up here, 2.2% variance, so pretty reproducible. And then down here now we get the results with trial one and trial two, and underneath there's a number, and that indicates that trial two is the best one. So let's put it number one in a, in a rank, if you like, and number one is, is the second best. So we're gonna do the third one now, so I click add trial again. Okay, so now we've got my three tests overlaid on the screen. And you can see down here, the reproducibility, it's saying was 3.6% variation. It says I took a deeper breath on that one. And if you look down at my three trials, the last one it's put as the best. And the difference is quite big, really, from the first one. But we've got at least two acceptable trials in there. So we're quite happy with that. So three graphs are on there. I'm gonna click on test because I'm happy with that and it's automatically saved that already. So just click on test. And we're now back to the first screen again that we saw. And I'm gonna click on the FVC this time, the forced vital capacity. And the same thing again, we need to block the spread. So I just put my hand over the bottom, click okay whilst holding the spirometer and it will come up on the screen, setting the baseline, avoid any flow, start the test. So this is gonna be my force one now. <clears throat> so whilst I was blowing out, you probably noticed there was a, a green dotted line down on the screen. That's my six second line, so that's where I should. Now down here we get the results for that test, so we've got the predicted, lower level of normal, my current best one, and percentage predicted. Again, I've only done one trial so far, and the parameters are here, and we can see my FEV1, for instance, was 98% of predicted. Interpretation, we can't get one yet, because we've only got one test. So I'm gonna do a second one. Now for this one, I'm gonna switch on an incentive. So where it says no incentive, there's a drop down menu, and we've got three incentives, a balloon, a cake, and a monkey. So I'm just gonna switch the cake on and I'm gonna click on add trial. Now, if the incentive doesn't come up full screen, there's a small button here of two arrows. So it may look like that, and then just click on that and it will open it up full screen. So I'm gonna try and blow all the candles out. Okay. So we'll take a couple of seconds and it will revert back to the results screen, but you can see all the candles went out and it tells me it was a good effort. So there's my two graphs now overlaid on the screen. Again, very reproducible. Variation is here. So FEV1 was 1.7% variance. FVC was 0.2%. It interprets that as normal spirometry. And then again, down here, we've got trial one, trial two, and it's saying trial one was my best one so far. So I'll switch the incentive off now. I'm going to do a third one, so add trial. So my deep breath in again. Okay, so we've now got the three graphs overlaid on the screen. They all look pretty identical. Variation is very reproducible. It's within the 5% guidelines. It says session complete, great job. So we've got three good tests, two within 5% at least. And then down here, we've got trial one, trial two, and trial three. And you can see the order it's been ranked in, and it's saying trial three is the best one because it's put a number one underneath it. So we can look at that compared to predicted, and we get the percentage predicted down there. Now, at this point, you could just print it if you wanted to. Just hit print here, and it will print out on A4 paper. I'll just show you what that'll look like. So I'll click on report and it will open up the report on the screen for us to look at. So you can see here that we've got the surgery details will be at the top here, patient details here, test date and time will be there, results for the test will be there with the best in blue and percent predicted in blue. 
and then the graphs are also on there as well. You could put that into a PDF if you wanted to. So you click on print menu and then go across to PDF file and you can create that into a PDF document if you wanted to. If this was integrated with System 1 or EMIS, it would automatically file all of the spirometry results as read codes back and attach that PDF automatically into a consultation. If I go to main menu, we'll be back to the start again. All of that data has been stored so we could go into that patient at any point and look at the history. Otherwise we can click on patients and start a new patient again.